Hey there, and let's get to it. This is a very quick one looking at flag and marker options inside of DaVinci Resolve. First of all, flags and markers are ways of drawing attention to certain clips or to certain points in a clip in order to either remind yourself of something or to warn yourself about something that may have gone wrong in a clip. They're represented with these two blue icons on the toolbar. This is a flag, and when I click on the drop-down menu next to it, you can see that there's options for different colors, and the same thing for the markers on the side. Now, these are entirely arbitrary colors. You can assign your own meaning to them when you start using them. So, for example, if a third of my film or music video was shot in front of the green screen, I might find it really useful after I've laid down the edit to identify which clips require chroma keying. Uh, and I'll highlight them all as being green and I will then filter out my timeline in the color page to only concentrate on the green screen clips. Likewise, I've got a short edit here and some of these shots require a bit of VFX work. So this couple have steam coming out of it. I can click on the flag and indicate that this clip will have steam. There's also one where the actor's arm will be tracked, and I will notify that this is a VFX shot as well. I've also got a clip that clearly has a very serious mistake in the background. We can see the boom. So for this, I might not want to use the VFX flag. I might want to use something more alarming to indicate an error, and it's red. If I lay down a flag on a clip that shares a source media with another clip, both of these will now obtain the flag. If you did want to indicate a specific point in time, but you didn't want to end up flagging all the other clips that come from the same place, then what you need to use are markers. So here I can drop a cyan marker and then go down in time and drop another one. I can also go to the clip that shares its source media and drop a different colored marker. And I could see that it's a very separate event. Deleting a flag or marker is easy. You select the icon and see that it's highlighted and click backspace on your keyboard to delete it. With markers, you're going to have to delete them separately. You are able to apply multiple flags and markers onto an individual clip. And the reason you might want to do this is because a single clip might qualify for several comments. So I might have something that's both green screen and contains an error and also has lighting issues. You are also able to double click a flag or a marker in order to leave notes for yourself. And once that's done, the flag will obtain a black dot in the center to let you know that it has some sort of commentary on it. You can use the M key on your keyboard to drop markers automatically. Just make sure that you have the clip selected before you click that. Otherwise, your markers will end up on the timeline itself, which is also really useful because then you can start making commentaries about where you want your titles to appear or if there's a certain part of a film where there's issues or there's notes that you want to leave for yourself. Let's go into the color page. Right now I can see all of the clips used in this timeline and all the associated flags. What if I only wanted to focus on all the visual effects shots? I've received all the DPX files from my graphics guys and I'm ready to start compositing. In that case, I'm going to go up here into clips and I'm going to filter what I see in my timeline by the blue flags. So when I click on that, it gets rid of everything except for what was marked as having a blue flag. This is incredibly convenient because if I take you to my earlier example, one third of which was based in the green screen, I would much rather have all the green screen shots laid out side by side and then I can just create an assembly line workflow rather than having to jump around and possibly miss a clip here and there. So this will really speed things up. By the way, this in no way affects your edit. If I was to come back to the edit page, everything is still laid out in the correct order. It's a, it's a little bit of a mess with all the flags and markers everywhere. And all I have to do is make sure that I'd select all clips inside of my filter options and the entire edit comes back. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.